rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are right against your sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you with our soul. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We justly deserve your righteousness and your blessing. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The introit is printed in the bulletin. I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You have loved righteousness and made it Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your, comprehend beyond your companions. I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, nations will praise you forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. In the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you made known your only begotten Son to the Gentiles. Lead us who know you by faith to enjoy in heaven the fullness of your divine presence. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament for the Epiphany of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar, and your daughter shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come, and they shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 3. And for this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, Assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gifts of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Ghost. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. And after listening to the king, they went on their way and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. You may be seated, we sing him 395.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the Gospel from Matthew chapter 2, which was just read. Today, we move from the season of Christmas into the season of Epiphany. Epiphany comes from the Greek meaning to reveal or to shine. And while Christmas is often referred to as the celebration of Christ's birth for the Jews, for people like Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, Anna and Simeon, Epiphany is sometimes designated as the Christmas for the Gentiles or of all the nations. For Epiphany brightly reveals that Jesus, true man and true God, comes not only to save his people, the Jews, but those of every tribe, race, color, and nation throughout the world. St. Matthew's Gospel provides us with the rich details regarding the Magi who came from the East who see the star, follow it to Jesus, and worship him. These magi are considered wise men, and our text for this day of Epiphany reveals where their real wisdom lies. For it's the same wisdom that God's word reveals to you and me. The wisdom of faith is seen following, and worshiping Jesus. These magi possibly specialized in studying dreams and stars and other written materials of the past. Some commentators think that they may have come from the area of Babylon, present-day Iraq. And that means that they would have some knowledge of Balaam's prophecy in the book of Numbers where he speaks of a star that would rise out of Jacob. Balaam says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and it shall crush the forehead of Moab and break down all the sons of Sheph. And we also know that the prophet Daniel lived in Babylon with his fellow friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All counseled King Nebuchadnezzar and the other wise men of Babylon. Such wisdom may have been available to these magi from Babylonian accounts regarding the coming King and Messiah, Jesus. It's reasonable that the wise men, after seeing the star in the east, follow it with all the purpose to worship Jesus. And those three vital actions, seeing the star, following it, and then worshiping Jesus is exactly what they did. But that's even more remarkable when you take the time to consider it. Why would these magi follow the star in the first place? Possibly 900 miles in the ancient world, going 10 or 15 miles a day. And it's so much expense with so little to go on. Why take that journey? Because that is what the wisdom of faith does. It sees, follows, and worships. Noah trusted seeing with the eyes of faith what God had told him. And he built the ark. An ark that saved him and his family from a worldwide flood. And when they got off the ark, he worshipped God when he was standing again on dry land. Abraham also 
saw that God would protect him and Sarah when they left his family in Haran for another home in Canaan. He followed God's will and also worshiped God when he heard that he would be the father of many nations. Faith sees, follows, and worships because God always fulfills all of his promises to his people. And that's evident in the account of Epiphany also. It's sometimes said that seeing is believing. And of course, being in Missouri, we have the motto, the show me state. Show us something if you want us to believe it. And on account of this saying, I witness testimonies of two or three witnesses is a vital and valuable necessity for solving criminal cases in a court of law. But what is perplexing in our story is that even though the chief priests and the teachers of the law in Jerusalem see and hear what the prophet Micah said about the Messiah being born in Bethlehem, they choose to ignore it. And so they also failed to follow him and worship him. Even though Jesus comes for the Jews, his own did not receive him. Even though the distance between Jerusalem and Bethlehem was minuscule, about five or six miles, compared to the hundreds of miles that the wise men traveled, neither Herod nor the Jews see, follow, or worship Jesus. We might think, why did the Jews not see Jesus as the Messiah? They had all the prophecies. They had all the details. Jesus said, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Sometimes many see the word or hear the word, but never follow it or worship the center of it at all, Jesus Christ. We all have our Bibles in our own language, the Old and the New Testament, but are we open to see and hear again the star of the Holy Word, Jesus, and follow him? Do you put aside everything else each day for God to let his word have his way with you? Do you see and hear him in it, follow him and worship him, bring him gifts in thanksgiving for all that God gives you day after day? Not always. The faith problem is ours also. We're often lazy and lackadaisical with our faith. King Herod had no faith, only fear of those who might ruin his position and power. Many of the Jews had no faith either, only fear that Jesus would disrupt business as usual. What rules your life now? Is it fear, anxiety, and pain? Or faith, hope, and joy? Know that God cares more about you and your life than you do. Hold on to all of God's promises in his word. Those promises to help, heal, and save you. We have to confess that we don't always do that either. We'd rather try to solve our problems on our own before we seek God as a last resort. How often do you come to worship him? How often do you attend God's house for the divine service? Read your Bible. Share a devotion with your family. How often do others see you 
following Jesus. Sadly, within American Lutheranism, many are content to worship once a month or less. And how idolatrous that is of all of us. Failing to love God first, above all things. How much time goes by when we go without God's word and God's very body and blood. Friends, we can trust God's promises to us, for he is always with us, always. So let every anxiety and trouble go. Cast your cares upon him, and he will sustain you and never let you fall. This epiphany, the wise men again provide wisdom for faith to see, follow, and worship this newborn king. The star of God's word always brightly points to Jesus, the light of the world, the one God sent to save you. Jesus did not come to overthrow King Herod or rule as an earthly king. Jesus comes to rule your heart and your life. And that is why these wise men brought them gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, of tremendous value in the ancient world. For they believed Jesus to be the best and truest jewel, the most precious object of all, Jesus Christ, that pearl of great price, did not serve himself, as did King Herod, who would soon slaughter many innocent children in Bethlehem because he couldn't find Jesus. No, Jesus Christ is worshipped by the Magi, and he brings heaven and all the riches of God to you giving you righteousness, peace, glory, and finally life eternal in heaven. Jesus served Israel and all nations and brings light, life, truth, grace, mercy, peace, and love to you and me as well. This innocent child comes to save the whole world to make the ultimate sacrifice to serve us on a cross outside of Jerusalem. God does not lie. The miraculous star which led these, peop these men to Jesus is an incredible miracle. But new miracles occur every day as we notice if our eyes are open to see, follow, and worship him. Each time a new baby is born is a miracle. Each day that your heart beats, that your lungs draw air, is a miracle. Each spring when new leaves grow on trees is evidence of God and his life among us. Each day, your baptism is like a fresh shower, washing away all your sins, leading you to eternal life in Jesus Christ. And when we celebrate the sacrament of the altar, you are offered another miracle in this meal. Through bread and wine, our Lord Jesus Christ mysteriously gives you his body and blood for the forgiveness of all your sins and to strengthen your faith so that you may always see, follow, and worship him. After the wise men made it to Bethlehem, they knew their journey was worth it because they saw with their own eyes the greatest gift of the world, God's Son in the flesh. And that even though your life's journey may feel long now, 
God brings new blessings to sustain you each and every day. And one day you too are promised to see Jesus face to face as these wise men did. But until that day, God gives you wisdom for faith so that you may always see Jesus in his word, follow him, and worship him as the Savior of the world. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the gathering of the offering. We rise and sing the offertory. In our prayers this morning, we remember Russell Schmidt, who was hospitalized this week uh, uh, with a toe in injury that had to have his toe amputated. Uh, and we also pray for all those who are sick and recovering from colds and flus and everything else that seems to be going around. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, look with favor upon all your servants who are ill, assure them of your mercies, deliver them from the temptations of the evil one, and give them patience and comfort in their illness. And if it please you, restore them to health or give them grace to accept these tribulations with courage and hope. O Almighty God, you have Call the nations to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. We thank you for the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has made known to men your power and grace and glory. Grant that we may behold you in all his wondrous works, offer you pure and holy worship, and bring you an acceptable sacrifice of true and joyful service. We remember before you your church in all the world, gathered from all nations and peoples and tongues. We pray for those who serve before your altar and proclaim your holy word. Bless their ministry, that through them your love may be made known to the salvation of many souls. Bless the Christian people and grant them faith unfeigned, that by your grace they may be a clear light to the world and fruitful in all good works. Shine through the missions of your church with the glory of your gospel, that the people which sit in darkness may, may behold your glory in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord. We remember before you the sick, visit them in mercy. The sad, grant them your abiding comfort. The heavily laden, give them rest. We pray for those who rejoice that they may remember you. For all those busied with the affairs of this life, that they may not wander from you and for all men that they may come to your eternal salvation. And to you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, be all praise and glory, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We sing hymn 397.
we rise for prayer. Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you for the abundant mercy that you this day so richly have provided us, blessing us not only with daily bread for our bodies, but also with heavenly food for our souls. Grant that your living and powerful word may abide in our hearts, working mightily in us to your glory and for our salvation. We commit ourselves to your divine protection and fatherly care. Let your holy angels be with us that the evil foe may have no power over us. Look in mercy on your church and deliver it from all danger and adversities. By your Holy Spirit, comfort and strengthen all who are in affliction or distress and grant your abiding peace to us all through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that following his steps we may steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Our closing hymn is number 400.
just a couple of quick things if you're able to help with taking down the decorations please we're going to do that right after worship here so stick around and help with taking them down and it won't take too long also if you have an article for the annual report get it to Kathy today so that they can run it off this week Kathy I have all my articles in Also, with all the sniffling and sneezing and that that I've been doing this week and everyone else apparently has been doing, we're going to dispense with shaking hands today. So have a blessed week and Rachel Acolytes next Sunday. So have a blessed week. Um.